Freemasonry, we all know about it, we've all read about it, we've all heard about it, and today we're going to attempt, if we can, to unravel some of the mysteries of this most secret of all societies. We did promise you a few months ago, I said, that we'd look at Freemasonry. Now, over the course of the last, uh, I suppose, 10 or 12 years, this ministry has collected a lot of valuable documents from all different sources. We're going to come to some of them in a minute. But I'd like to start with a quote which came from the Catholic Directory of 1960, and I now read, It has been maintained that Freemasonry is unknown to the most of its craft, managed by five or six Jews, who bend its influence in every possible way to work against Christianity. That's from the Catholic Dictionary 1960. Now, I want to move on quite quickly because we're going to cover a lot of ground here. We've got some wonderful books we're going to try and do, either in this part or a part two. Barry Smith, wonderful two books there, and a wonderful book by... Uh, uh, W.J. McCormack on Christ, the Christian and Freemasonry. That's what we try to do at this ministry. We try to give a Christian perspective on Freemasonry, why you ought to get into it, why you ought to get out of it. Now, first of all, I'm going back to a wonderful document that came in Punch. You remember the satirical magazine Punch, which was owned by the controversial Mohammed Al-Fayed, he who owns the uh, Harrods in London and the Ritz Hotel in Paris. <laughs> and Punch, wonderful magazine at the time, it's now defunct put out this registration form, roll up, roll up your trouser leg, how to join the Masons. And it all goes through it, how you can join here. They want to know all about you. Have you ever been convicted in court of any offense? No, I've not been convicted and so forth. Bit of a spoof document, but a lot of truth in there, all about the Masons. And he kept it running for several weeks and a week later, quitting the Freemasons, I rather like this one. And he highlights some of the lodges here, James Companion, the United Grand Lodge, the Temple Chapter of Jerusalem, uh, the Royal Arch Masons of England, and it's got the names, the documents, and the stories behind Britain's secret society. It'll knock your garters off. Typical l joke there. I think he always felt that the Masons were against him. Little joke there that came from Punch there. You can see it here. Um, this was a letter that the Grand Lodge of England wrote to Mohammed l well, or the editor of Punch, uh, they won't be very happy what was happening there, and you can see that there. Maybe you'll have to freeze frame this and read a little bit more. And uh, <laughs> he ended up with a joke at the bottom here. Fancy setting up a grocer's with me. This is Fortnum and Mason. Fortnum and Mason, get it? Only if you know my secret handshake. And another little joke, if I can lay my hands on it as regards Masons. Uh, they can laugh at themselves, although I think this was a little bit different. And this came from this document I picked up somewhere, I'm not quite sure, page about Freemasonry, probably picked this up about 10 years ago, all about getting Masonic rings and uh, current announcements, requests for correspondence, so forth. Little joke at the bottom, quite liked. Thought for the day, enough about secret Masonic handshakes already, let's come up with secret Masonic milkshakes. Like it? Good one. Now, to get back onto a more serious tract, uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I went to a book fair in Crystal Palace, South London. Uh, I went to the end of it, actually. I'd missed the morning, and there was a gentleman there selling up some stuff there. And he said, what are you looking for? I said, oh, anything about Freemasonry, about the craft, and so forth. He said, well, I've got some documents here. He said, you can have all of them for a pound. So I said, yes, please. Got home, opened them up, and I was absolutely amazed and delighted to come across these three documents. Now... As you can see here, these were awarded to this gentleman, Edward Charles Towers. Don't know the gentleman, don't know anything about him. But it seems in 1967, he qualified to move up to the next degree, the 18th degree. And that you can see it there, out of 33 degrees, he qualified to become the part of the Rosy Cross there. Don't know what happened to him afterwards, I don't know if he died, whether he went higher up or not at all. But you can see the two-headed eagle there, Russian symbol there. Uh, and Kaiser Germany as well, he also used that symbol. But this is the Supreme Council telling us that Brother Edward Charles Towers, and I don't know who he was to say, was qualified to have this wonder there. You see, see the two great seals there. Never seen these before, and I doubt anybody else would have seen these, except the person who actually got them. Now, also in this job lot was another one, which, if I can get open, again, a wonderful document, wonderful vellum paper, and so forth. Um, a little bit earlier, this one, we go to 1950, I think it's 1953, yes, 1953. Again, the Supreme Grand and Royal Chapter of Royal Arch Masons of England awarding this gentleman this splendid document, which he probably had framed and had up in his study. There you see a seal there. 
see in six in there then, that he has reached uh, a new degree here then. It says what the degree is there. Bond of Friendship in London. And there's his number, 4853, September 1953. And round about the same date, this one was also in there. Another splendid document. Again, the same gentleman, Mr. Towers. Uh, again, 1952 when he received this. True Friendship, there's his number 6631 in the London Lodge. The right Honourable, the Earl of Scarbungley, it says there, KC, Grand Master, awarding it to this gentleman. And I suspect probably what happened was that these are on the wall. He may have gone actually high and gone up to the 33 degrees. Now, as you know in masonry, there are 33 degrees. Now, I've done a little map here, a little chart, if I can lay my hands on it little thing I did myself to give you some idea of it. Ah, here it is here. Now, you probably know most of this, but the first degree is Entered Apprentice, then we go to Master Mason, uh, and so forth. Then Entered Apprentice and Master Mason, uh, and Fellow Craft. So, Entered Apprentice, Fellow Craft, Master Mason. Most Masons, I'm told, by a Mason, will get no higher than this. This is will suit them for their business purposes, for business deals and so forth. But you start going up the chart there. And our friend who we've just seen was up to number 18, which if I can see it, there it is there, the Knight of the Rosy Cross. So he's halfway there and he's moving up very, very quickly. Now, you've seen all the documents there. Oh, another little thing there. We're always told in Freemasonry that so much of the money goes to charities. This came from Punch, again, by two journalists. And they claim here, there, that... Uh, the Duke of Kent has acknowledged that of the 16 million net expenditure by the major Masonic charities last year, only 1.3 million, just over 8%, went to non-Masonic charities. So it's very much an apartheid uh, thing there that so much stays in there. Now, moving along quickly, and forgive me for this, but we're trying to get so much packed in on this there. We move along now to some of the books, and if James Companion on some of the books here that we've got. We're going to be able to do this, or maybe we'll have to do a part two on this. I'm going to wind it up here now. I'm going to have a little break. We'll come back later and we'll look at these two books. So till then, a little bit of masonry, Maranatha.